cost of living adjustment, then for all mathematical intents and purposes, we just gave them a pay decrease. And that's objectionable. That's, that's unethical. That's immoral. That's ungodly. It's un-American. It's wrong. Do you understand? There's no equivocation. That's wrong. But yet that's what they've done. Not one year, not two years, not even 10 years. Okay, not even multiple decades they've done this. But this has happened over a period of half a century. So not only have they been woefully remiss, it's obvious, glaringly obvious to me now, this is what I stumbled upon, that they have been deliberately remiss. They are obviously in the pockets of very powerful people. The Federal Labor Department has not represented the interests of the federal minimum wage worker at all. At all. They've done no good but only bad. They've only, they've only accommodated the evil men in their plan to normalize slavery and take away the hope from the average working person in America. And that's where we are today. So my friends, you see how evil men have a huge advantage over righteous men because righteous men, of their own choice, have boundaries. They won't, they live by the golden rule, that's it. And in that, that extends to their business practices. They want to treat everybody in their business world just like they would their own children as much as possible, okay? And, you know, this is, they, they have an advantage because evil men don't value conscience. They don't care about the soul. You understand? But righteous men do. They say, yeah, above all. I mean, there's all these things I won't do for any amount of money. Cherish those things. Thank God for those things. You see, this is what distinguishes the righteous from the wicked. Those of pure heart from those of impure heart. It's as simple as that, my friends. So I'm on to some recent current events and other talking points I want to get into. I'm going to try to read really fast. So there are solutions. If you, We had a well-orchestrated uh, housing rental strike, but that's a lot to ask. I know. Couch, surf, do what you can. But, I mean, boycott rental housing. That's, it's powerful. That would bring down housing costs. Or the wages. Like I said, I mean, the federal uh, labor department, if they came out and they said, we got to get the bull by the horns. Okay, we got to get hold of this thing. Do you have any idea what, what minimum federal minimum wage would be if it had kept up with the true cost of living to, have, to maintain the same buying power that a dollar an hour had in the early 60s? It'd have to be 50 more in some places, a little less in others. But you get the drift, right? I mean, it's a big deal, man. It's traumatic. I mean, when you realize the truth is so much further, uh, it's a huge departure from where we are. I mean, we're living in a world of lies, man. This this is a, a freaking made-up reality. It's an unreality. It's sick and twisted and evil. I'm telling you, we're, we're in trouble because, like I said, they've got legs, momentum. They don't they don't want to quit doing this thing. They don't want to quit enriching themselves and accumulating wealth. They're insatiable, and it, to to stop them, it's like snot-nosed, spoiled brat kids are drunk on on God knows what, and they're out of control. And you think it's going to be fun or pretty to put these people in their place and demand justice, not for some, but for everybody? But we have that power and we have that responsibility, that duty, that obligation to our fellow man, to Jesus Christ. Christian nation, let's start acting like it. You know, last week I was mocking people on antidepressants. Listen, I've actually, I know firsthand. I, at one point my life was very depressing. My son had died from what the sudden infant death generic for, well, we don't want to talk about the vaccination you got at birth. Eh, we don't know. You might tap into that da vaccine damage fund. We don't need that. You can keep that money there. We want to show that vaccines are all safe all the time. Even on day one of the baby's life, we'll give them hepatitis B, whatever. If you're poor, we got to cut corners, you know. So, but that happened to me. And then my wife decided about a year later or something to separate and uh, call it quits, give up. You know, my little girl, and she was hooking up with this guy and that guy. So I went into a kind of a profound clinical depression. I got diagnosed with that. And so the doctors decided to put me on pills. I tried the Prozac, the Nopramin, the Clonopin, and all this crap. And I, I said, you know what, I can't hang with this crap. It's just making me feel drunk. You know, I didn't need it, you know, but I did need God. I mean, you know, that's it. At the end of the day, we all need God. So when you realize God's there for you and then your love for him starts growing and you focus on those things about yourself and you realize that, that God likes that about me too. And you let it grow and expand and then you let it, 
you let it branch out into other avenues to where you like yourself, you like your character, your personality, who you are. And, uh, you know, that. I, but I still, I'm probably depressed to this day. Nevertheless, I've coped, I've contended. I haven't done anything violent to anyone. I, I've got a semblance of peace, you know, not all the time. I mean, I don't feel forgiving all the time. But you know what? When I'm in my right mind, at the end of the day, I got to forgive everybody that's ever I felt slighted me. At least I perceive slighted me before I ever forgive myself. You know, I, what to say, uh, you know, don't throw stones if you live in glass buildings or, you know, that plank. Jesus told that story of, you know, if you want to correct your brother, you got to pull the plank out of your own eye to pull it out of his and all that. And, you know, maybe somebody is really completely out of bounds and wrong. But, you know what, would you rather be known as a nice human being? Just a dumbass, naive maybe, but, you know, wrong, but right, you know what I mean? Or you, do you have to be right? Are you so prideful that you got to be right? And, you know, even if you're wrong and later you find out you're wrong and that guy was right, you know, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's better to be, have a good reputation, keep your reputation intact. At least you're a nice human being and people generally like you. You know, like me, I might be abrasive behind the camera, but in person, I try to be lighthearted and as much as possible. I know sometimes controversial issues come up, but um, you got to be humble. I think you just, you know, we've got to be nice to each other. Be cool. Love. Love one another. I want to make a correction. Last week, I stated that... Um, Christ uh, came to abolish the law. I meant to say that Christ did not come to abolish the law to fill it, but to fill it full. That's the uh, new two commandments. Love God above all else with everything you got and love one another as yourselves. I watched the Armstrong Williams show this uh, past week and uh, it was all about suicide prevention. And you know what? God calls on all of us to be uh, counselors, suicide prevention counselors. Because you never know. You could be the last person someone talks to you don't know what's in their mind. They might be getting ready to go home, blow their brains out. So uh, just remember that as incentive for being a nice human being and listening to people sometimes, not just talking, but, you know, be a friend to somebody else. So what's with all the people that have been vaccinated getting COVID? All right, friends, I'm on to some thoughts from this last week or so. If you feel stressed out or have ever felt stressed out over something, perhaps several sundry things, please remember or understand this much. It isn't your owner, your parents, the almighty creator God that has caused this stress. The stressors I speak of are organic ones. Rather, they are artificial stressors, unnatural, artificial, invented, unduly imposed stressors foisted upon you by evil men through the power of the purse, a.k.a. money. These are the same stressors that any, anyone has been enslaved felt. Our instinct and unstoppable drive for justice are in direct and acute conflict with unnatural stressors. If I possessed only one superpower, it would be the ability to remove each and every artificial stressor in my fellow human being's life. Though by de and by default, that would require the absence of each and every form of money. Rhetorically, I wonder if the cost of a dozen eggs had increased commensurately with the cost of housing, what would a carton of eggs cost? Accordingly, a basic math at that, according to basic math, a dozen eggs would cost 25 to 30 bucks. And for your information, since both commodities are basic essential human needs, they are a fair comparison. Would the mainstream media tell the public as they have with housing costs? call 25 to 35 dollar dozen eggs a good thing citing increased value which side am i on your side my side her side his side and on and on in that theme with that as our collective motto we can learn to live together in peace harmony and happiness is my wild cynicism justified or am I unduly cynical, considering the fact that, like everyone else, I have been subjected to utter BS from birth imposed by evil men, I honestly believe my earnest cynicism is completely warranted. 
Friends, I got to leave it there. Best to everybody. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful eternity. And listen, be nice. Win friends for your owner, your parents. Love each other. And, uh, you know, let's work toward a perfect world. We're as close as we could possibly get. This thing.